Now, let's welcome our first guest. Zelia Ankrum has a choice role in the new Disney series, Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion, which is streaming and airing now. Here's a look. What is this thing? I know this might seem a little crazy, but it just showed up on my bed. The mask chose me. Whoa, that is full of magic. Let's see what I can do. What's in the sand? I really want to blow this up. What I need is a collab. And I know just the guy! You're a black scorpion. Well, I am excited to welcome Zelia to the CMAX studios. Thank you for being here. Of course. What what fun for you. I mean, this this show seems like it really has a sense of cohesion and family and fun, and it, it just looks like you're having a great time. Yeah, the cast is so close, so it felt like, you know, we could, you know, mess up around each other and still have a good laugh. So you told me before we, we aired that you actually filmed this in New Orleans, which really surprised me because it's <laughs> uh, set in Los Angeles. H how did that work? Um, it was it was really great. Um, you know, New Orleans is full of culture. You know, we were going to parades at Halloween and having so much fun. And, you know, there's always jazz playing on every street. So it was awesome. So tell us a little bit about your character. Your char character's name is Maya and her last name is uh, Miller Martinez. Miller Martinez. Mm -hmm. So uh, suggesting that Maya comes from um, a mixed cultural background. Yes. What can like you tell me. us about that? Um, so actually, I was uh, having a Zoom meeting with the showrunners, Eric, oh, sorry, uh, Eric Garcia and Leo Chu, and we were talking about like the character and how they planned on going on with it because um, they were like, are you half Hispanic? And I was like, yes. And they were like, okay, that's awesome. We're going to make your character also half Hispanic. And I was like, thank you, because, you know, uh, it was, it's incredible to have your character reflect yourself, especially in that aspect. And so... Um, it was also really kind of fun because my mom's maiden name is Martinez, so I thought it was kind of cool. So you play the sidekick, yeah. and that's what that's definitely what it is, but yeah. it's a sidekick with a twist. I mean, you have a lot more personality than a lot of sidekicks. How did, how did that happen? Um, I feel like uh, there was some changes made to Maya's character in the script. And she got a lot of really fun, funky lines. And you know, um, I think what makes her so different is that she's really smart, but she also has her very um, forgetful moments. So you know, um, she has lines that you're like, "Oh yeah, you're a coder," but like, are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a line in like 106 where she completely forgets forgets everything that happened in the episode, and um, tells Violet not to do something, and Violet's like, "But it." it worked out well before. And so she's, she's like, kind oh, yeah. of a little bit spacey or a little bit mad genius, yeah. that, that, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, now her look is really distinctive. Uh, and I notice, you know, you, you wear some pretty funky things. I mean, some pretty, actually some really cool things. Yeah. Um, but tell us about your hair and makeup. My hair and makeup, um, that was a choice that was made during the camera test, I think. And um, I'm so glad they went with it. They put me in panda buns and they uh, like loved it immediately. And then they tried to put me in some lipstick and then we realized with the mask, maybe no. <laughs> but um, so we decided to go with some eyeliner and that eyeliner is so awesome. I love how it looks in every episode and how it switches up. Now the show has, has a fun message and it's it's there's a lot of action but it also has sort of a deeper underlying message about um, inclusion cultural inclusion there's lots of great references throughout mm -hmm. um, in terms of Mexican American culture did you guys talk about that what, how, do, how do you how did you kind of set yourselves up for that message yeah um, I think that was always something that we really wanted to bring in with the show um, you know, even from like the pilot pilot to now, um, you know, there's things that you can find in the show, even the food and the, the colors, even the lighting. There's just so many um, aspects of the show that brings in that representation. Now, the, the wrestling, which is mm -hmm. a big part of this, and it's Lucha, mm -hmm. 
Is that is that the name yeah. for it, Lucha? Were you a fan of that beforehand? Did you know much about it? Um, I didn't know that much about it. I knew of some Lucha in our family on my mom's side. Um, not too much about it, but that uh, we did have some Lucha roots. Um, but after like being in the show, I learned so much about it, and it was incredible just to see like the history. I also think it's fun that the show talks and uses talks about and uses social media so much. Um, Violet is basically like live streaming <laughs> herself, yeah. but they also have some interesting conversations about what is the persona that you put on social media, and mm -hmm. should you be all that concerned about what other people think about you? So I'm curious in your own upbringing. Did you get to use social media from an early age, or what was your your connection to social media yourself? Um, I think I only like around thirteen started using social media, and so I guess I, I definitely could relate to um, you know learning about the dangers of social media, especially on the show about how you know negativity can be spread so much quicker as well as positivity, but especially negativity, and um, I think that they portrayed that really well. Yeah, it, it, it really makes you think um, mm -hmm. sometimes just about how quickly stuff, especially when you live stream it, how, yeah. how quickly it gets out there. Um, tell us now about your time in Fresno, because you also are a, a working Fresno actress. Yes. <laughs> um, and so you are in the, the Children's Musical Theater Works production of Les Mis, which is coming up. So. What role do you play in that? I play Cosette. You play Cosette? Yes. Is that kind of like a dream role for you, as you always wanted that one? I mean, I grew up watching Les Mis and Phantom of the Opera and, uh, you know, those kind of, <laughs> like, operatic musicals. So it was uh -huh. it was a dream come true to be uh -huh. Cosette. But, you know, it was just awesome to be in it. And I understand that there is a, another member of your family that's also in the show. Yes, my sister Vega. And what does she play? She plays Eponine. So between the two of you, you have like the vocal horsepower of like <laughs> the entire the entire cast. Is musical theater something that you're really drawn to? Would that be your first love? Yeah, definitely. My mom's a theater teacher, so I, I grew up singing uh, musical theater, and I grew up being in her shows, and then uh, eventually that translated into being CMT. And when you look at the, this Disney show that you're on, is that, would you consider that like your big, that's your big break into the, into the industry? Yeah, I, I think this is, this is huge, <laughs> definitely. I mean, um, you know, being in musical theater is one thing and then being in this feels like, oh, you know, cause I'm just so used to being in musical theater and then, you know, being in front of the camera, it's completely different. Well, and I can, I can imagine with, I mean, because this is this is a, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a high budget, but I mean, it's definitely a sophisticated technological production. And I'm sure it seemed like there were dozens and dozens of people on the set and you start to realize, wow, this is really a big business and yeah. this is all kind of, of riding on me. Did you ever, did you have any nerves like before going, you know, oh, on that first, before going for the camera, before the camera. Um, do you find it hard to um, to memorize your lines for scenes or is that something that comes pretty easily to you? Um, it was a bit easier because we sort of had a scattered kind of uh, schedule, uh, like scattered chaos, organized chaos. But, um, you know, we would do a scene from, you know, maybe the bottom half of the show mm -hmm. or the bottom half of the, the episode and then we'd go right into like the, beginning scene of the next episode but you know it just it depended on what worked with that day but you know um i think it helped kind of doing that because if i had to memorize like the the two episodes i'm not sure if i would fit it all in my mushy brain <laughs> well yeah and i could see where especially if you have to do things out of order yeah that can that can that could uh, really be a challenge i guess the difference with theater is that you're there alive, and if you mess up, yeah. you, just, you just have to keep going. Yeah, but it comes with a lot of good stories, man. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, anything else to share from from your time on set? Is there, like, is there something that, that you never realized about TV until you actually um, did it, until you were in front of the camera? 
I would say definitely the dedication. I think uh, <laughs> everyone has this idea of like a, a film actor, like, you know, with a coconut in their hand, <laughs> with an umbrella in it, um, you know, enjoying life. But, you know, it, it's, it's still very much a job. And you're, you're um, trying to entertain people while still, you know, navigating everyone's reactions from the few people that are on set. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of trying to find what your character is and then also trying to get the lines right and, you know, right. what would your character do? But, like, say the lines, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any word on, on what you're going to be doing next beyond Les Mis? Um, well, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of plans for right now. We're kind of in between everything, mm -hmm. but, you know, hopefully... A season two. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for stopping by. Uh, it is so fun to be able to, to watch somebody that you know, you know, <laughs> on, on the screen. Um, and it, again, it just looks like you're having such a, a, a great time. So tell us again, where can you watch the show and then give us, or, or give us the dates on Les Mis, if we have them. Les Mis. I'm not sure that I have the dates on my Miz. Okay. But I do have um, Disney channels uh, on Fridays uh, at 8.30 p.m. And on Disney Plus, the first 10 episodes are released. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And we'll, che we'll check on the dates for, yes. for Les Mis because that's <laughs> definitely something you want to. Yeah. Uh, we we want to get people out to mm -hmm. as well. We've got our own, own Disney star in the midst. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much. Thank you so much. Again, you can watch Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion on Disney Plus and the Disney Channel. And you can see Les Miserables at Children's Musical Theater Works from July 15th to the 24th.